Hello, it's me again. I'm Nafid. In this video, that's part of the Clay Pass training, we will discuss the wired authentication on Aruba OS switches. Now, in here, we would like to look first of all, make sure that the client is connected. So we will verify that connectivity from the Mac table, uh, app table. We will then go to create um, create the service, the wired authentication on Clay Pass using using the wizard. Then we will look at the configuration on the switch for dot one x authentication. We'll then modify the service to add um, you know some tightening and we'll uh, discuss it and then we will test the authentication. Let's have a look. Now as you can see the client um, is connected to a switch interface number five as you could see in the topology. Now at this stage there's no authentication. Just to verify that the client should be able to pick up an IP. Um, number one, we're going to look at the status and look at the MAC address of that interface. That's the MAC address. And if you double check on the switch, we will verify this is the interface that has that MAC address. And we will verify um, it's, uh, in, in 25 if DE. We can issue the command show MAC address to verify that Mac is connected to interface number 525 EDE. So that interface is now connected and it's a member static uh, of static VLAN 61. Now, again, no authentication. The client should be able to pick up an IP address in VLAN 61. And uh, for verification purpose, I have configured the switch uh, VLAN 61 with an IP. So I can show IP. So this is the IP that we will be able to ping from the client. So we could see the MAC table that indicates interface 5 connects to the client and we will ping the switch. So we generate up entry on the switch from the client. So for the client. So we can ping the switch IP. That is enough to generate an up entry on the switch. We can have a look at that if need be. So that's a switch show up you're going to see that the interface 5 and the ip address of the client is 10.161 mapped to the mac address that's the up entry on the switch for that specific client on that interface now the steps these steps just to verify and make sure that we are targeting the correct interface the correct client no authentication at this stage, clear pass is not involved, and the IP address that was assigned dynamically to the client is 10.161.51. IP config 10.161.51. We should be able to ping. As we have seen it, we were able to ping uh, the switch. Now we'll proceed to the steps for authentication. First of all, we will configure the service in clear pass that will assign a VLAN as a many use cases, but we will use one or two use cases assigning VLAN to the interface should the client try to authenticate. We'll deploy dot one X authentication initially. So what we're going to do now, we will go back to the switch and move the VLAN on interface five back to default VLAN. So if I issue the command show show VLAN port five detail, we're gonna see it's VLAN sixty one. I'm gonna just move it back to VLAN one on tag five. If we show the previous command, that should show now VLAN one. So we would like to dynamically assign VLAN sixty one to the interface once the client connects and authenticates. We log into clear pass and we will go to the configuration. So we'd like this time to use templates and wizard. And we would like to go to 802.1x wide authentication. Click on this and we would like to call this one anything. Just wired Aruba OS is because that's where we apply the authentication service to this type of switch. Um, so here we already have joined the domain and we um we, we have used active directory 
as an authentication source here uh, you can clearly see so you can optionally add some stuff here so I would like to go and specify the IP address of our switch that will be 10.1.60.5 That is 10.1.60.5 and the type in this case, because we classify this as a Hewlett packet, uh, we will go for this. So again, the same shared secret. And we can just put any device name. Next. We leave this one, we don't need for the time being. Next. Now here, we would like to configure what action or VLAN role. In this case, we would like to send the VLAN. So in here, I would like to put the condition if they, when the user connects, what to do. I'm going to say if when the user connects, that user is a member of equals so is a member of a group in our domain controller in our uh, authentication server we have created a group that's called corporate so that's the group security group and we can right click go properties who are the members employee so we're going to use that specific user so we're going to say if somebody is a member of corporate group, then assign that VLAN, for example. We can always modify this. Then the VLAN assignment, I would like to make it 61. We add the service. The default VLAN, of course, uh, if that doesn't work, then probably we go for VLAN, say, 60. Yeah? So there we go. The service has already been added now. So we can go to and see less our service being added. We don't have to reorder because that's unique as a condition. If you click on this service, we're going to see that the, the two conditions being created, these are generic ones. So I'm not specifying anything basically. And in the authentication, we use all of these. We leave them, we leave them as default. And the source of the authentication is Active Directory. And we have not touched any role uh, mapping policy. That's not going to be the focus of this. And in the enforcement, we are sending back something. So the enforcement policy that was created for us, it says in the authorization, it's reading from Active Directory. And if the user is a member of corporate group, then assign the enforcement profile, profile one. We can always go and just double check what that profile is. So we can go here and we can filter based on that profile name. And that profile says, send back something. So this is timeout, session timeout. We can control, this is the wired session timeout. The VLAN value we send back is VLAN 61. So we would save this. We will not make any changes to this one. We will go and make sure the switch is, is being configured correctly to talk to that clear pass. And we will enable authentication on the switch port. Also, the device has been added, but of course, we did not need to because that's part of this. But that's just to prove that when you create the service from the um, template uh, and wizard, then the step we have or the option step has added this Aruba OS, which is as we have done it, it's HPE uh, type of device. Um, in the service, I would like, or I can, uh, I'd like to add another condition here. We only had two conditions. I might want to say, okay, if the connection come from certain uh, device IP, so connection, and I must say comes from a certain NAD IP, if I'd like to make it more specific to this specific device that is equal, I can say not equal or equal, ignore case. And the IP for this, in this case, is 10.1.60.5. Then this is one of the conditions of this service 
that has been created or we added a new condition in the authentication I would like to add another source I would like to add local user uh, repository and I would like um, basically to go back and enable authorization and the authorization tab is showing up now I would like to look at the endpoint repository as part of the authorization service or uh, maybe decision making now we can see the authentication sources are already authorization sources I have added endpoint repository as an additional one I'm going to save this now in the enforcement as we have seen before we could modify the enforcement profile um, enforcement policy here and we can look at um, what happens here if you read the rules if this rule is not met is I'm a member of a corporate um, group then the default profile will be assigned in here default wild profile and now this so we're going to go and we can search for that again we just type uh, wired we can see there are two of them created one is based sending, sending VLAN 61 we we can rename this one to make more sense so we're going to say wired VLAN 61 so when we read it it makes more sense we're going to save this and here the default we said we're going to send VLAN 60 so we're going to say attribute um, profile and just we say a uh, wild VLAN 60 and that will be reflected in our enforcement policy so if you look uh, if you go uh, and look at the enforcement policy the one we uh, has been created for us and uh, we're going to see that the default has been changed or renamed to um, wild VLAN 60 it means if this condition is not met then the user will be assigned to VLAN 60 okay otherwise if um, this condition is met in the enforcement policy the user will be assigned to VLAN 61 meaning 61 will be sent back to the switch we're going to save that on the switch for your reference that's the radius configuration that I will um, have it on the switch once we do this we will enable authentication on the client and we will test the authentication so show radius authentication tells us that we have this radius server uh, and uh, the rest are uh, just standard port UDP TCP 1812 so we will now go to the client and enable authentication so on the client we we'll go to services and we search for the wired auto authentication so wired auto config we will um, it is normally disabled but we will start that one now it means the client um, interface card that was not authenticating now is enabled for authentication right click and we go to authentication as you can clearly see now because we would like to, this is for just demonstration purpose we're going to replace credentials for the a specific client and we will test the authentication but before we do that because there's a trust there's no trust in certificate we're going to say don't verify which is by default and make sure that everything is going to work because by default this will not verify the certificate that is submitted by uh, by the server and we go to advanced settings again authentication will be uh, user base okay if then we will replace credentials with the ones that we know is going to work so initially we're going to go with the employee then the password authenticate So authentication happened and we can see the the client has picked up an IP so if we go to status and we go to details 
we notice that client has been assigned VLAN 61. If we visit the switch and if we look at the status, we're going to see the client has authenticated. So we'll verify the client from the switch perspective. Then we will look at clear pass, show port access authenticator. We should see one client has been authenticated. Authenticated client is one. Interface number five. The untagged VLAN was assigned is VLAN 61. If we go and visit clear pass, we're going to and look at the monitor access tracker. We're going to see employee. And that employee is using this service. And the output, what concerns us is the output, the response from clear pass back to the machine is to assign VLAN 61. We will test the same authentication with the local user that should assign VLAN 60. So now, again, going back to the switch, if we issue the command show VLAN port um, 5 details, we're going to see the VLAN that is now assigned VLAN 61. If we issue the command show run interface 5, we will notice that by default, we have mapped VLAN 1 to interface 5. So if that condition goes now, it means VLAN 1 will replace VLAN 61. So if the client disconnects, the VLAN 1 will go back, will be the one that will be, because that's the static VLAN assigned before the dynamic VLAN 61 assigned based on the authentication. Now we will test with different user that should assign VLAN 60 as per the conditions in our clear pass. So clear pass, um, in our clear pass service. And if you remember, this is our service. In the enforcement policy, we said, if this condition applies, then assign VLAN 61. Otherwise, assign VLAN 60. So this is a very simple one, meaning if we connect using a local user, it will be assigned VLAN 60. So with the local users here, we can see there's a test user. We're going to use that test user now. So on the client, we're going to right click and go properties. And we're going to replace the credentials here with a local user. So the local user name is test user. Now this has authenticated, as you can clearly see. We should expect to pick up an IP in VLAN 60 rather than VLAN 61. So if we issue the command IP config, that should be VLAN 60. Now clearly, we can go back to the switch and verify that connectivity. Make sure that the VLAN 60 is, is the one that is assigned. we can see VLAN 60 is being assigned. We visit clear pass and we look at the monitoring. In clear pass, test user is the one that's used. And because the policy has said the output will be VLAN 60, as per the conditions in our policy. And that proves that you can assign VLANs dynamically based on the conditions, again, this is something that we can always do. Now, what we tested here is the .1x authentication um, in this case.